The position of the anti-Gamergate folks is a childish view of the gaming world. A good way to look at this is to start with the much maligned Law and Order episode, Intimidation Game. First of all, it implies that women don't really participate in gaming, and it really belittles something that a lot of people really think is important to them. And finally, it trades on stereotypes, and the worst kind of stereotypes. I don't really blame the SVU writers, they're just working with the material that's been provided by gaming journalists and people like Jonathan McIntosh, who produces Arnita Sarkeesian, and people like Brianna Wu and Ben Kachira. They fundamentally mislead you into thinking that girls aren't welcome or aren't common in gaming, and that's wrong. And I've got footage to prove it. For you open-minded viewers, or are you real journalists? Take a look at what happens at real gaming events. So you can see just how childish a point of view the anti-gamer gators have kind of staked out for themselves. And when you're done, I really hope you ask yourself why gaming journalists like Jeff Gersman and Jeff Keeley and even YouTubers like Boogie2988 and Angry Joe, they know how childish this portrayal is and they aren't really shouting down the anti-gamer gate folks. So let's roll the clips. Go home, gamer girl. What the hell is your problem? What happened? These guys, they just they just can't stand women in gaming. Do not go where you're not wanted, bitches. Sarah told me that the guys who did this don't like women in gaming. In reality, gamers hugely welcome girls. I mean, goodness, what guy wouldn't? Now, these clips, they're from the Phoenix, Arizona devastation event back in 2011. What we're looking at right now, two teams of four going against each other, and, uh, oh, there's a girl right there. And, oh, look, there's another girl. And if we look at the other team, hey, there's yet another girl. So why don't we see any of this in the writings of the anti-gamer gators? We don't see any of this in the news coverage. We, did, we certainly didn't see any of it in the SVU episode. What is it about white male faces that gets people so angry that they just have to just discount that there are women among them? I don't know. But as you can see, it's much more likely that instead of coming up and telling people to go away, they're going to be trading phone numbers and doing other things that hobbyists with the same interests have always done. Amazonian warriors is nonviolent and non stupid. Like overgrown boys, like staring at a screen, pressing buttons. Isn't there a basketball game on or something? Oh, basketball. Great. Now it's ironic that in this day and age of accepting other people, Anti-gamer gators really belittle and insult the interests of other people. So apparently we're not macho enough for them. How about doing push-ups for prizes? Is that macho enough? Is that competitive enough? How about being so hyper-competitive that you can get a crowd just to watch people play rock, paper, scissors for prizes? And finally, look at these guys. They've got money on this. The problem is the anti-gamer gators, they probably look at these screens and say, oh, look at that, pushing some buttons and staring at a screen, not noticing all the intensity with which these guys are playing. It's such a childish view of something they're completely unfamiliar with. Listen to these throwaway lines. Isn't there a basketball game on or something? And non stupid. This is something elites always do. They say, hey, what you like, it's not as nuanced as what I like. You know, niche markets are just that, they're niche. The biggest games, they're tried and true form factors like first person shooters, platformers, or resource management. And if the elites of the world don't like that, well, I'm sorry, that's just reality. <laughs> They were just the total FALs. Failures at life. The security footage, it's like trying to find a geek in a geek stack. Anyone look familiar? They all look familiar. That's the gaming demo. They were like young, um, they were white, but pale, like kind of skinny. That's 80% of the crowd. Worst of all is the stereotype. Really nasty stereotypes. Stereotypes that hurt people. White, pale, skinny. That's 80%. So do you get the picture? We're all cis white males. We're all look the same. They can't pick us out from a crowd, etc., etc. I, I hate to have to do this, but what I have to do next is to show you a bunch of people who don't look like that. Because that's just wrong. We don't want to objectify people. We don't want to treat people like a quantity. But that's what they do to us. So in our defense, we have to show people who don't fit this childish stereotype that folks like Macintosh, Sarkeesian, and Wu keep trying to sell. And Law and & Order, gosh, they bought right into it and they broadcast it to a huge audience. So congratulations, journalists. Congratulations, social justice warriors. You guys have managed to somehow inject about the worst possible set of stereotypes into the public 
consciousness. Why is it that the folks like Jeff Gerstmann and Keeley and the YouTubers, why is it they don't set them straight? They know this is not our demographic. In the end, if you're trying to portray a whole group of people to have something in common in the worst light possible so that it benefits you, well, that's just wrong. I guess that's social justice nowadays, but we used to have another word for it. We used to call it discrimination. <laughs>